I've had this step on my mind for a while as a major project milestone. Build the hammer encoder board and test the complete data path. Let's see if it works or, well, if it fails. Here is the test plan. Press a key. The HPS PCB translates the hammer position to a voltage. The hammer encoder PCB converts the voltage to a numerical hammer position value. On the microprocessor, my C++ code maps the hammer position, velocity, and acceleration into a strike velocity. That value is sent over UDP Ethernet to my computer. My Python code receives the message, converts the data to a MIDI value, and sends to my keyboard. I'm using my Roland RD2000 to synthesize a note sound. That sound goes to the speakers, and then, hopefully, <laughs> we hear a note. Skip to the end of this video if you just want to see pass or fail. First, to build the last piece of the data path. Previously, I described the board design and layout. However, it had a few issues, and so I designed an updated version. Here is the original design and changes. First, sending the clock via Teensy saved me a part to solder, but I second-guessed myself if it would be sufficiently accurate, so I added a clock. Second, the voltage regulator <laughs> was back-ordered, go figure, so I temporarily swapped for a different part. And third, as I thought about the mechanical design, I realized a horizontal orientation would be better. Here is the new layout and the new PCB. Also note the switch to surface mount passives with this revision. I'm going to bring this board up in four stages. First, get the clock working with an external 3.3 volt supply. Then get the 3.3 voltage regulator working. Next, the somewhat tricky ADC soldering task and bring it up with an external TNC. Finally, if everything else works, solder on the processor. Microprocessor test is last because it costs $30 and I don't feel like trying to save it if something else is broken. Here is the clock, <laughs> and that soldering is terrible. I even shorted two pins together, but fortunately they are electrically connected in the schematic. Let's see if it works. Sure enough. Next, the 3.3 volt power supply. Solder it into place. Drum roll. Okay, two for two. Next, the Analog to digital converter. I only have two of the new HEN printed circuit boards, so I was being extra careful when soldering. Here is everything on the board. For testing, I am starting with the prototype system from an earlier step, keeping everything the same as the prototype because that worked, except swapping the new PCB for the old analog eval card. And I <laughs> bravely including the HPS assembly from the previous video. So, removing these and replacing with this. Let's see if it works. I will monitor four signals when powering up. The data ready signal. This asserts each time a new conversion is ready. The chip select signal, which my firmware sends back saying it is ready to receive data. The signal that clocks data out of the analog to digital converter. And my firmware asserts a pin so I can check processor utilization. Let's see if this works. Powering on the board. Okay, awesome. All right. Finally, add the Teensy. So, going from here to here in the last step, and then now removing this and going to the finished board. I decided to record the first time I tried the complete system. As described at the beginning of the video, the signal goes from the HPS to the ADC, then to the microprocessor, over ethernet to my computer, using my keyboard to synthesize the piano sound to the speakers. Okay, then here goes the test. Next step is assembling everything.